Hey, what's up? In this problem, we have f of z equal to e to the z, and we have a set j, and we have to find uh, f of j. So that's the uh, image of j uh, under f. So here z is a complex number, and e to the z is actually the complex uh, exponential function. So you can actually write this as e to the a plus bi, because z is a complex number. And then you can use properties of exponents to write it as e to the a times e to the bi. Right? And then you can go further if you like and use Euler's formula on e to the bi and write this as e to the a times cosine b plus i sine b. And this lets us uh, think a little bit more clearly uh, about the problem. So let's go ahead and write down f of j. So by definition of f of j, this is simply the set of all elements uh, of the form f of z such that uh, z is an element of uh, j. That's the definition of f of j, right? So now we can start filling stuff in. This is the set. So we know f of z is e to the z. So this is going to be e to the z, uh, such that z is in j. But we know if z is in j, uh, it has this form, a plus bi. So let's write it as z equals a plus bi. And a is a real number, and b is a real number. So I'll just say a greater than or equal to 0, and uh, b is equal to pi over 2. And we'll just assume uh, a is also a real number. So maybe I'll, I'll squeeze it in here. All right, this is equal to, let's go ahead and replace z with a plus bi. So this is e to the a plus bi, such that uh, a is greater than or equal to 0. I'll drop the real number part. We'll assume it's real and b is equal to pi over 2. Okay, so just carefully breaking down uh, what this set is. And then we'll graph it. We'll graph the solution after we figure this out. So now we can use properties of exponents and write this as e to the a times e to the bi, just like we did before. And a is greater than or equal to 0, and b is pi over 2. Let's go ahead and use uh, Euler's formula. Let me write it again over here. So f of j, just to make it a little bit cleaner. This is equal to the set of all the elements of the form e to the a. And then e to the bi, this is cosine b plus i sine b. Right? That's Euler's formula. Okay. And here a is greater than or equal to 0. And b is equal to uh, pi over 2. Okay, so uh, we have now e to the a. Let's go ahead and replace b with what it actually is. We have cosine of pi over 2 plus i sine of pi over 2, such that a is greater than or equal to 0. So cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, right? So this is 0, this is 1. So we end up with this funny set. Uh, e to the a times i, such that a is greater than or equal to 0. So that's the set. So now we're going to try to uh, graph this. Okay, so let's attempt to do that. So I'll do it over here. So i is right here. Let's call it, it's right here. It's on the imaginary axis. But all of the elements here are of the form e to the a times i. Let's think about this. The smallest a can be is 0. So if that's the case, you get e to the 0 times i. So you simply get i. After that, a is positive. So you get e to the a, where a is positive, times i. If you think about the graph of e to the x, it looks like this. And this corresponds um, to the point where uh, x is 0. Or if this is the a axis, right? this corresponds here to the point where a is 0. So after that, it just gets bigger. It's bigger than 1 in particular. right? So when a is positive, it's bigger than 1. So this is going to be bigger than i, right? If, well, you can't really compare uh, i like that. But it'll be up here, right? It'll be up here. So it's going to be this blue strip, right? You can't really compare complex numbers with greater thans and less than. Uh, but what I'm trying to say, I guess, is it's going to be up here because it's being multiplied by a number uh, bigger than 1. So this will be the graph of uh, f of j. That's it.